So muli ay uh, tumayo, sandali. At uh, ating basahin ng sabay-sabay, ng malinaw, maayos, malakas, may paggalan ang Sayita ng Diyos, yung ating pong teksto. Ito nga po ay nasa Hebrews chapter number 13 and verses 5 and 6. Hebrews 13 please and verses 5 and number 6. Basta po ako ng bawal sa inyo dyan na at sabay-sabay po natin basahin ang mga napanggit na talaga. Feeling begins. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Tawa ay ang ating puso ay Uh, sabi ng Amen sa mga nasabing talata at bago tayo magpatuloy muli ay tumulog tayo sa tuna. Manami bumaw po ang bawat isa. So, Hebrews 13 verses 5 and 6 po yung ating teksto. At lagyan natin ng marka upang uh, ating pong hindi tayo may rapag pang balikan. Ngayon po, As usual, no, nagbibigay tayo ng background muna, no? At uh, sabi na ng mga napag-aralan natin sa nakaraan, eh mga iba na mga bago sa atin ay hinabot yung ating pong mga surveys. At uh, ito pong Hebrews ay sabi natin the only one of the 27 New Testament books kung saan ay hindi po uh, pinahayag kung sino yung otor. No? Bagamat yung sa book of Acts, walang direct ang kapahayagan, pero dahil sa kanyang introduction at in comparison to sa book of Luke ay uh, sa ngayon ng lahat ng sumulat ito ay si Dr. Luke. At dito po ay meron pong uh, ibang ibang pinagpapalagay at kinikiralang writer nitong book of Hebrews. There are those who think that it is written by Barnabas while there are those also that uh, believe that it is Apollos. But we believe that the Apostle Paul is uh, most probably the author of this book on uh, the following reasons. First of all, because the early church believed that uh, the Apostle Paul was the author. So though the early uh, church, uh, yung kagod ang kanilang pinaangki o no, kinikilala, si Apostle Paul ang author nito o writer nito. The reason, is because of the characteristic ng closing of this episode. So, kung ibibigyan pa rin yung verse 25 ng chapter 13 ng Hebrews, ay uh, itong parangin po yan sa 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 17 to 18, 18 at makita po natin yung pagkakahawi, pagkakapareho ng uh, uh, closing, no? Closing statements sa nasabing aklat. And especially, most especially, yung expression na the just shall live by faith. Na ito po ay uh, wala po sa hata po chapter number 2 and verse number 4. At three times na ito po ay kinote sa New Testament. So wala po argumento. Uh, yung Romans kinote ito, 1.17 at Galatians chapter 3 verse number 11. And therefore, at uh, dahil ito ay twice na ginamit ni Apostle Paul at muli ginamit sa Hebrews so it is most probably that uh, uh, ito po yung uh, isa sa basis that Paul is most probably the writer of this book okay although uh, maaaring may mga hindi matanggap yan at may mga question pa yan pero ang pinaka-importante sa lahat And uh, we can be more certain that this book was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Salita po ito ng Diyos. Although first and foremost given to the Hebrew believers scattered throughout the world known first century. But this book is not limited to Jews. This is also applicable to us Christians, to the church. Now, ito po rin ang ninth longest New Testament book 
Okay, may isang po kasi ang longest New Testament book, di ba? In Gospels, okay? Yung Acts, alino na yan. Tapos yung Revelation, ha? It's 16 chapters, yung Romans. So, naglalaban sa 9 and 10 itong, uh, depende sa bilang ng, uh, chap ng verses and words. Ito po ay, uh, itong Hebrews is 31st longest biblical book sa buong Bible, no? With 13 chapters, 303 verses, and 600, 6,000 rather, 913 words was sa King James Version. Again, si Warren Worsby ay nabigay sa akin ng magandang outline para dito sa Book of Hebrews for us to to understand yung konteksto. No? Nung itong ating teksto sa sa pangkabuan, yung book context niya and division context niya. Sa kanyang B-book series, yung saan pinamagatan niya itong Be Confident, ay nilagay niya sa chapters 1 to 6, yung first division, 7 to 10, the second, and yung 11 to 13 ay yung third division. At yung uh, first two divisions, ang emphasis niya na usual ay doctrines, and yung last division, speaks of the duty no? in response to doctrines. Doctrines refers to what God has done for us. So yung superiority ng person in Christ ang apalawag doon sa first division, yung superiority ng priesthood in Christ, yung Melchizedek priest, priesthood, okay, in compared to Aaronic priesthood, at yung superior principle under the, the grace, yung, at ito po yung faith. At uh, ito pinag-uusapan ay yung importance of the Word of God. Ay, ito yung ating pinag-aralan, Word of God. No? Yung problema po nila uh, ng original recipient that they are drifting from the Word, they are doubting the Word, and uh, it led uh, as a darkness toward the Word. And uh, even worse, they are those who despise the Word and they are those who defy the Word of God. Kaya nga, isinulat ang mga ito upang tayo po ay uh, magabayan on how to properly treat the Word of God. So dito po sa ating uh, ginagawang pananambahan, bagamat online tayo, laging in-encourage tayo to, uh, op to have your Bible and open your Bibles at uh, magkaroon kayo ng notes. Don't just uh, listen, be a part no? of our worship service of our Bible study by uh, sharing what you have learned no? sa ating pong mga post sa online, particularly sa Facebook. Maganda, lagay natin ngayon may hashtag na tayo, no? Blessing from preaching. Hashtag natin yun para madali natin ma-connect yung bawat isa. At uh, let us uh, share the blessing to others as well and encourage them, no? Hindi kung ano-ano yung Challenge. Pag-aksaya lang ng oras. Ito yung pinakamagandang challenge. So, in fact, uh, no, the truth of the matter, meron danger, particularly because of our, our current situation, there's also the danger to drift, to doubt, and to have doubtness toward the Word of God. And uh, they are those who continue to despise and defy the Word of God. And by doing so, they are despising and defying God Himself. So, uh, kontrahin natin ito sa pamagitan ng pagpapakalat ng salita ng katotohanan. Gawin po natin for the glory of God maging yung ating pong Facebook at sa, maging sa abila ng ating situation. Now, sa ating pong teksto, as I pondered uh, these verses, okay, nabangit ko yung uso ngayon, ito pinalala, hana na po na naging uso nung ilang taon na ang nakangaraan. Hindi ko lang batid kung ang mga kabataan inabot ito. Kasi eh, naging uso nung araw yung, yung uh, slogan na No Fear. No Fear. Kaya sa mga cups, no? uh, sa mga t-shirts, sa mga stickers, sa, sa mga sasakyan ay kinakabit yung No Fear. At uh, sa, sa panahon na yun, ay uh, tila ba nga ito ay ine-embrace ng mga kabataan. Ito yung kanilang way of thinking. Ito yung kanilang way of making a statement. And yet, no fear to what? No, no fear to what? 
Sad to say, uh, ang, ang takot ng tao ay patungkol sa mga hindi naman dapat katakutan. At yung dapat na, at narapat na katakutan, yun naman po ang uh, binabaliwala ng mga tao. So, there is no fear to God. No? Nung naging uso yan, no fear to God. Takot sa barkada, takot na mabuli. Okay, may mga uh, malihiti mo rin naman na mga dahilan na kapaloob doon. Pero ang nakakalungkot, wala hong takot sa Diyos. So, uh, yun po naman nakakalungkot no? sa, sa slogan na yan. And yet, yung takot po na gaya ng mga ilang nabanggit ko, at kasama na po itong pandemic na to, ito po isang realidad na hindi natin maitatagwa. Realidad sa maraming tao at may mga ilang mga mananampalakaya ang uh, tunay din naman na nakagadama ng takot patungkol dito sa ibig na pandemic na ating patuloy na naka- naranasan. Uh, nabasa ko, may tatlo namang na, na-confirm, positive doon sa GMA. Lalo tuloy na hihirapan at natatagal ang makauwi doon. At tumaas pa, no? Lalo na ito nagkaroon ng uh, di pa nga opisya nangyari yung general, ano yung general uh, community quarantine na uh, bukas. Eh, tumaas pa. Biglang marami po yung nakumpirma. Itong uh, mga nakaraan ng ilang araw. So, natutok pa rin yung takot. Okay? Natutok pa rin yung takot. At hindi lamang itong pandemic na to, no? May mga tough times tayo sa buhay kasama itong pandemic na to or I should say, most especially itong pandemic na ito that uh, uh, we are uh, all a bit anxious. Ano mangyari sa coming days, sa coming weeks, months, and even years? Okay? Pag naman wala po sa atin, talagang makapag-predict what this pandemic, even after it will bring, And yet, amidst of all the uncertainty, ito po naging tema natin sa maraming mensahe natin itong mga nakaraan, no? We can rejoice that we can be certain of our future with the Lord. Pero po tayong uh, kagalakan, dala ng katiyakan ng ating pong kinabukasan ay nasa uh, pag-iingat at kontrol ng ating Panginoon. So the world is ever changing, kaya nga meron din yung tawag na new normal, so pagbabago na naman yan. Hindi ko alam kung tawag tama niya, tawag no normal o abnormal. But the future of the redeemed, are you saved? Now if you're, if you're safe, you're sure of that, you, 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 uh, you possess that, uh, the true salvation that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ, then, uh, Our future was settled before time as we know it began. Kaya, ito po may saan ito ay pinamagandang kong no fear to this pandemic and the new normal. No fear no? to this pandemic and the new normal. Hindi naman po ang nag-iingat po tayo at uh, uh, tayo po ay uh, nag-observe pa rin ng uh, quarantine. Ay, ibig sabihin, takot na po tayo. Iba po yung takot sa nagiging maingat at iba naman po yung pagiging matapang sa mga kayabangan at kawalang ingat. Tayo po ay may pag-iingat. Kaya po man sa kabila ng ating pag-iingat ay dapat i-waxin natin ang anumang takot sa ating puso't isipan. So the thought we are considering today deals with our fear. Okay? Pag-marinate dito sa ating situation at yung magiging outcome pa nito sa hinaharap, yung uncertain future on our part, but we're certain because of God's uh, the assurance that God gave us to His Word. And yet, ang iba pa mga fears na meron tayo sa ating buhay na ang Diyos at kayo nakakalam. Tayo na ang Diyos at uh, tayo sa ating sarili nakakalam. At dito, We're not going to learn only how to deal with our fears, but on how we can overcome it. How to overcome these fears as well. 
So I want us to look at our text, these verses, and uh, learn as I discovered, no? In preparing this lesson, the principles revealed in them. And I would like to preach on the top, okay, again, no fear to the pandemic and the new normal. So first of all, binyang pasip po natin yung the believer's conversation. The believer's conversation. In verse number 5, Special, uh, particularly first part dito. Sabi yan, Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be without covetousness. So, we have in that verse, yung word na conversation. At para higit natin maintindihan ng ating tinatalakay dito at pinupuntos dito, maintindihan na lang natin kung ano ibig sabihin ng conversation dito. So, kung muli pag hirapin conversation, ang pinag-usapan natin pag-uusap, no? pag-uusap ng dalawang tao o ilang mga tao. Tala ka yan. It has something to do with speech. But the word conversation here deals with much more than just the speech o yung pag-uusap o tala ka yan. Ang ibig kong sabihin ng conversation dito actually ay our manner of life or our character. Yung ating pong paraan ng pamumuhay. Yung ating pong karakter. Okay? Yung ating pong pagkatao. So our conversation actually deals with our day-to-day -day lives. Yung ating pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay. Eh paano ba tayo mamuhay araw-araw? So yan po yung ating pagkatatandaan. Pag pinag-usapan mo natin ito po, ah, habang pinag-usapan mo natin ito pong word na conversation. Our conversation. So let us consider under this, the path of our conversation. The path of our conversation. Uh, we would not do an, an, an injustice to the text to deal with the path of life diba? that we all take. That yung pong conversation nga ay yung ating paraan ng pamuhay. So ano ba ang direksyon na tinatahak ng ating buhay ngayon, nakaraan ngayon? At hindi po natin uh, ito uh, Ma ma maintindihan mo boss at natututunan yung uh, kalooban ng Panginoon patungkol dito anong direksyon ang tatakin natin sa mga susunod pang araw ha? sa abila ng pandemic na to at maging pagkatapos nito so dito malinaw na malinaw that the writer which we believe is the Apostle Paul under the expression of the Holy Spirit is concerned with the way that believers actually live from day to day. Ha? Hindi po pinabaliwala ng Bible ng Satan and Diyos ng Diyos kung paano tayo nagubuhay araw-araw kung di meron siyang interes na katuon yung kanyang atensyon at sinisiyasat yung ating pamumuhay araw-araw. Samantalang tayo po yung naka-quarantine, naka-lockdown at pagkatapos nito, Okay, sa new normal. Paano tayo mabubuhay? Bilang mga mani ng palataya. Bilang mga kristyano. Marami po nabubuhay ngayon. Nakalulukot at uh, maging yung mga ilan na nagpapaglala ng kristyano. Ang naniniwala that uh, they are born into this life and they travel the path that life has set for them. Tangay lang sa Agos. Mahala na si Kapalaran at uh, sunod-sunod lang sa uso. Yeah, gaya yung pinagin natin. Sunod-sunod lang sa uso. Bagaman ito po ang uh, itong prinsipyo paniniwala ay popular na pag-iisip. Popular na paniniwala. Pero, sadyang hindi po ito biblika. Walang duda that this is again the teaching of the Bible. Hindi po tayo ah, uh, nilikha ng Diyos, nilagay sa mundong ito, nabubuhay sa mundong ito, lalo pat inaitas ng Panginoon to simply follow the ways of the world. Sumunod lang tayo sa agos. Ha? Makiuso lang tayo sa uso. Hindi. Listen, mga kapatid, God did not save us and then set us out on our own. We have uh, the assurance na pag-aralan na rin natin mga nakaraan. 
that God has a particular path that He desires us to take. Ang Bible na binigay sa atin ng, ng uh, kapahayagan na merong tamang landas na nais ng Diyos na ating tahakin bilang mga mano ng palagaya. Tamang buhay na dapat natin isa buhay. May pandemic man o wala. Patuloy man ito o matapos na. Maging sa tinatawag nilang new normal. Meron pong binababagong landas at buhay na ninanais ng Diyos na ating tahakin at ipamuhay bilang mga mana ng palagaya. Dito po sa Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. Tingnan niyo po sa inyo mga Bibles please. Bagaman dito'y particular ni para sa Israel, ingat yung principle po na kalupan dito ay wala pong kukontra na ito po ay angkop at ukol din sa ating mga mana ng palataya sa dispensasyon ito. At ang sabi po rito na Isaiah 30 verse 21 And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. So nakita po natin merong way that, wanted, that God wanted for the Jewish people in, uh, uh, in the time of Isaiah uh, he wanted them to uh, uh, to take a particular path that he desires them to take. So in light of this, we can also claim that God has uh, a particular path that he desires us to take as believers. Okay? The kind of conversation, yung lifestyle, yung character, yung manner of living we need to have daily. Okay? Day after day, no? Ng ating buhay. And this is Psalm 1.1. And one. sabi, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Well, hindi lang sinasabi ito yung landas na dapat takin. Sinasabi rin yung landas na hindi dapat takin. At hindi niya nais na ating kalagyan. So, kumpleto po no? yung, yung kapahayagan at uh, yung instruction ng Bible sa atin. In, in Psalm 37, 23, okay, Psalm 37, 23, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. So, hindi po tayo robot. Hindi, hindi po sinasabi nga robot tayo. Kundi yung ating dapat na lakad, yung ating dapat na direksyon, Yung ating, ating dapat na buhay. Ang Diyos ay meron ang nilatag na, na particular path, klase ng buhay na dapat isa pang buhay natin sa araw-araw na maging kagalakan natin na masunod yung, pag, uh, yung uh, kalooban ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. At dito rin naman ang Panginoon ay malulugod sa atin. So the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. So here you know, we have the path of our conversation, the path of life that we are to take okay, day by day because this is his desires for us. No? And secondly, dito naman sa ating text ay uh, pinahayag ng Apostle Pablo yung burial of our conversation. Meron pong problema, meron pong panganib. Okay? Dito po, particularly, binagig ito rito, ibig sabihin itong kanyang mga silulatan, meron po silang problema. Maray, hindi man lang, hindi man sa nilang lahat, but uh, among some of the believers. And, and this, sad to say, is also true. Hindi man sa lahat ng mga mga ng palataya, kundi to some of the believers as well sa ating panahon. And uh, dahil dito ay siya po in-inspire ng Holy Spirit to address this problem. Okay, to address this peril, itong panganib na ito. Ano po yun? It is it has something to do with covetousness. Covetousness. So here, the writer, no? Charge them to live without covetousness. So when we talk about yung tinatawag natin conversation, yung lifestyle, so ito po yun, ito po isa sa mga desire ng Panginoon. Ito po yung path of the Lord wanted us to take your life without covetousness. 
Okay? At yung tremendousness, simply, simply defined as a lack of money, greed, and dissatisfaction. Oh, I'm not sure kung si Joey din yun nga, pero sa Facebook, di ba nakalagay doon? Yung sabi, hindi masama yung pera. Sabi niya. Bakit? Eh, maraming tao sumasaya sa pera kasi maraming nabibili at uh, nagagawa pag may pera. Ang masama, yung kawalang akin, uh, ano ba, kontentuhan sa buhay. So, si, si nakalagay doon sa picture si Joey doon yun. I, I'm not sure kung siya talaga yun. Pero sino man, tama yun, no? It, uh, money is not the root of all evil. It is the love of money. At yung love of money is covetousness. Kung dito sa Hebrews, no? Ang, ang, ang ginamit ng termino ay covetousness. Yung covetousness is a love of money, greed, and dissatisfaction. The dissatisfaction. Lalo-lalo na po sa panahon natin ito. Lalo pa bago itong nangyaring itong pandemic na to At maging sa kabila ng kasi na po yung pandemic, makita po natin na may mga tao talaga na kubetos. No? Give them kubetosness. Bakit eh? Nagkakanakawan pa ng dapat na pantulong sa tao. May mga nanluloko pa. May mga naghiiskap pa. May mga uh, nandaraket pa. Sa kapila ng ganito nga yung ating sitwasyon. Di ko ba? So this are but uh, uh, clear. Clear indication of that, we, that uh, many nations as well as many people has become uh, covetous. We are living in a covetous society. People are driven by money. Desire to have more. Kahit na ito ay sa maling paraan, isipin nyo, ah, may mga nagpepeke pa ng gamot. Isipin nyo, no, may mga ah, nandulogo pang mga manggagamot. Okay? Sa anong sari. So may mga peke pang ospital o clinic, ang bihira. And this covetousness, ang pinag-aralan po natin ang kasaysayan ng isang katauhan. Ha? Ano po yung masamang dinulog nito? Homes are, many homes are wrecked by it. Many businesses are ruined by covetousness. Even the ministries and ministers are damaged by covetousness. Lives are destroyed and wars are fought because of greed and covetousness. So let us all be reminded that there's na, nothing good about covetousness that we should desire. And it is actually, sabi ng Bible, this is a sin. Covetousness is a sin. In Exodus 20 verse number 17, ano sinasabi yan, di ba? Kapaloob sa sampung utos, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, Nor is man servant, Nor is maid servant, nor is ox, nor is ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So, one who covets is not right with God. One who covets is, uh, uh, one who covets violate, uh, violates the commandments of God. Uh, maaaring nababasa niyo pag tayo nagpo-post ng prayer requests, hinalagay natin, we covet your prayer. Si ba yun? Si ba Hindi naman na iba yung ibig sabihin nun, no? Iba yung ibig sabihin nun. It's another term. Or uh, meron different meaning of the term or use of the term. Pero yung covetousness nga, na love of money, yung greed, yung selfishness na nakapalog dito. Okay? Yung a heart of covetousness will lead to peril. Kaya mag-ingat na. Pagaya ng pag-survival of the Peter, no? Paano? Peter's. Mawawala na yung principle. Okay? Mawawala na yung isang no, nakakalimutan yung pagiging kristyano. Pera-pera hmm? na lang. Mawawala na yung pagiging kristyano. Beware and be aware. Okay? Let us all be warned and be forewarned. In Proverbs 15 verse number 16, sabi po dyan, napakagandang uh, aral mula sa bahay mo. Sabi, better is little with the fear of the Lord 
and great treasure and trouble that we Itong pandemic. So listen, sabi na Ecclesiastes 5.10, okay. Ecclesiastes 5.10 Yan ito po nakasal He that loveth silver Shall not be satisfied with silver Nor he that loveth abundance with increase This is also vanity Sino sa salita nito? Walang pera? Ba biro-biro nun? Yan sinasabi uh, Masama yung may pera Ang sa salita yung walang pera <laughs> Pero may sasalita nito Sabi natin, nakaranas na makahawak at magkamal, magkaroon ng maraming pera. Pero siya mismo nakatuklas ng katuanan that this cannot satisfy. At uh, may danger nga na you will add want more, even covet others, okay, for you to have more. And at the end, this is Vanity, walang kabuluhan. Walang kabuluhan. So I forget the name isang Indian na kilala na mayaman. Pero ang instruction niya, pag siya ay uh, ialagay sa atol, ataw niya siya mamatay, dapat nakabukas yung gilid ng ataw at nakalabas yung kanyang kamay. Yun ang kanyang gilid na ginawa. At tanong tayo lang, nakita yung kanyang kamay na wala siyang dala na ano pa man. At gaya na sabi ng Bible, tayo ay uh, uh, nabuhay sa mundong ito, pinanganak na walang dala, at aalisin tayo sa mundong ito na walang dadalhin ang mga material na bagay na mula sa mundong ito. So magiging walang kabuluhan. Kung ginugol mo yung buhay para lamang sa paghahangad ng pagyaman, pagkakaroon maraming salapi, at na maging ito isang kamagitan ng masamang paraan, at lalo na, Magiging dahilan para talikuran mo ang Diyos. Sa huli, hindi mo yan madadala sa kabilang buhay. So now, uh, nandito po yung warning. And God doesn't just warn us of the perils of life without giving us a means of escape. Yan naman po kagandaan sa Panginoon. Ang Panginoon po ay nagbibigay ng babala sa anumang panganib at siya rin ang nagbibigay sa atin ng gabay para natin maiwasan o ating uh, matakasan itong ating ay, ng interruption, sorry. And secondly, take notice also of the believer's contentment. At ito po yung second part ng verse number 5. Diba? Masabi, and be content with such things as ye have. Thank you. Be content with such things as ye have. So we need to consider a couple of things in regard to our contentment. Okay? Ito pong tungkol sa contentment, it is a command. Ha? The command wants to be content. This is a command. It is not optional. It is a clear-cut, direct command. The command to be content. At nandito po yung idea of satisfaction, sufficiency of enough. And this is, and this is obviously the opposite of covetousness. Contentment is the opposite, opposite of covetousness. Listen, maaring Hindi tayo magkamal ng kayamanan ng mundo. We may not have the riches of this world. But, despite of that, we can be content, especially in the Lord. We can still be content even though we don't have the riches of this world. We can be content in the Lord. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 8, ano po sabi dyan? But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. So, to put it simply, and sabi ni Bible, 
Be content to the Lord. Just be content to the Lord. So ito po yung command. Don't waste your command. Particularly to us believers. To the whole world, but most especially to us believers. To be content. Now secondly, bigyan pa sila natin yung consideration uh, to be content. The consideration to us to be content. Ano ba eh? Uh, what is it that we are to be content with? Saan ba tayo dapat makontento? May mga uh, ilan bang bagay o may uh, particular lang bagay na tayo dapat ay makontento at sa iba, okay lang, hindi tayo magkaroon ng contentment. O halos sa lahat. Now, natin po sa, sa talata. Be content with such things as you have. Be content with such things as you have. Ibig sabihin, kung ano meron ka, kung yan ang kasalukuyang meron ka, then be content with that. Ha? Be thankful to God. Okay? And appreciate that. And uh, be satisfied with that. So, ito po yung binabanggit dito na bagay na kung saan tayo dapat makontento. Ano yun? Kung ano yung meron tayo. Okay? And this has, has to do with our mindset, with our focus, and with our inward desires. If we are walking the ways of the world, we will desire the things of the world. Yun ang nangyari kay Dimas. Yun ang nung uh, masakap nangyari kay Dimas. Iniwanan niya si Paul at ang ministry dahil sa natuon yung kanyang atensyon sa mga bagay ng isang libutan. So if we are walking with our eyes on the world and look at the ways of the world, this is the danger we will desire the things of the world. On the other hand, if we are walking with our eyes on the Lord, it will be much easier to focus on Him and His blessings and this will surely ah. Uh, uh, will cause us to be contented, to be more than not to be more contented. Okay? Minsan nakakal, uh, nakakalungkot, na hindi naman, alam niyo kasi yung every nga, ang purpose niya is to share. So we're trying to share the word of God, we're trying to share how uh, God is uh, blessing ministry, how even the Lord bless us. Hindi naman payabang yun. Yung mga tao lang na ganun ang isip, kapalatangan ka ng payabang. Alam niya, saan nagpo-post ka. You just want to share and tell the whole world how you appreciate the blessing of the Lord. Now, misa, mayroong comment na dinadaan sa Diyo, pero delikado eh, no? Yung sitang sana all. <laughs> sana all. Eh, minsan, hindi joke yung panginig. <laughs> okay? So, pwede na sana praise the Lord, thank you Lord, na sana all. May danger. May mga bagay na hindi mo masamang sana all. O oh, ako nga, nilalagay ko, nawa all. Lahat ng nag-blessing sa preaching, lahat ng uh, na-attend sa online, sana all. Lahat na bibigyan ng tithes sa sana all. Hindi po yan masama. Pero pag nakakita tayo may anong iba, at na yun, na, na piling natin na harang sila lang ba ang anak ng Diyos, at sa iisipan natin, hindi man necessarily sa Facebook, wala yan, sana all. At hindi mo na nakita na may blessing ka na wala yung iba. Na mapalad ka kung tutusin kong karapas sa iba. At nawawala ka ng content that that is very dangerous. Okay, maganda na kapag nakita mo, be less yung iba. Be thankful to God for them. And be hopeful that God will bless you. Pero be content with what you have. So most people in our world today don't have the right focus or attitude. Their desire is to accumulate on wealth and prosperity they can. Eh, gusto pumasok, pumasok sa uh, politika, hindi man natin lahat. Gusto mag-artista kahit na ma malaswa na yung gagawin. Yung sabi, kapit sa patalim at uh, kinakapala ng mukha. Because, mali yung focus. Okay? 
At yun nga, ulitin ko yung mga pagnanakaw, pa yun yung bike, minanakaw na, ay yung ginukuso, yun yung nakaw. Yung desire to accumulate all the wealth and prosperity they can even sa maling paraan. This has distorted their focus and uh, even affected their attitude. So I suppose these people think they can somehow take it with, with them when they die. Pero wala tayong madadala na anumang material na bagay na taglayin natin sa mundo ito sa bilang buhay. Okay? I am in no way making light of, light of the difficulties that the majority of, uh, of people are facing. Or even of uh, uh, some believers are facing. Hindi ko binabaliwala yung katotohanan. Mahirap ang buhay. Mahirap ang sitwasyon ngayon. Mahirap yung ating kalagayan. At pagkatapos ito, sadyang mahirap talaga. Hindi na natin pwedeng baliwalain yan. Pero dito, sa pagsalita ng Diyos, I do want to challenge you to consider the things you have. Huwag mo hanapin yung wala sa iyo. Be thankful ka kung ano meron ka. Okay? With that, be content, sabi ng Bible. God has not blessed us all beyond measure. Okay? Hindi po tayo uh, hindi pinagpala ng Diyos ng na hindi sapat para sa atin ang ibig kong sabihin. At ang katotohan, we all have clothes to wear. We all still have food to eat. At nung buwan na, na salamat sa Panginoon, a place to live. And above all, a measure of good health. Hindi tayo affected ng pandemic na ito. Hindi tayo, wala tayong sakit. Mas mahirap yun. Mas mahirap yun. And those things are enough for us to be thankful to God. And God just wants us to be satisfied. He gives uh, what we want. Okay? We give what we really need. Not, uh, not our luxuries, but our necessities. That is what He promised. The Philippians 4.19 My God shall supply all your need. Not our wants. All our necessities, not our luxuries, according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So be aware of that. Sabi ng Matthew 3, uh, 6, 31 to 32. Matthew 6, 31 to 32. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what, where we die, shall we be clothed? For after all these things, do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. And in James 4, no? Verses 1 to 3. James 4, verses 1 to 3. Quickly. Let's have again. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that were in your members? Ye lust and have not he kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. He fight and war, yet he have not because he ask not. He ask and receive not because he ask this, that he may consume it upon your lust. So, okay, not to be covetous, but to be contented, no? Not covetousness, but contentment. Thirdly, bigyan pa siya natin, uh, your believer's companion. Bakit hindi tayo dapat natakot? Ha? Sa pandemic na to, sa new normal, at ano pa man ibang bagay. Why? Because of the believer's companion. And that's uh, the last part pala ng verse number 5. Last part pa ng verse number 5. Second part yung kanina. Uh, 5B. So, basahin ko yung verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. So, bilang usapan natin yung believer's conversation and be content with such things as you have. So, dyan naman yung believer's contentment. Nasusubay mo yan yun, ba? Okay? At the last part po, for he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So, ito po yung ating companion. Sino yung ating companion? The Lord Himself. Okay? And to live without covetousness 
And in order to possess an attitude of contentment will never be possible without the Lord, our companion. Hindi po tayo makaka, uh, makakaiwas sa covetousness at hindi po natin makakamtan yung contentment kung wala po tayo nitong companion na ito. At sino yun? Ang Panginoon mismo. Now, our companion's promise ay nagigyan. For He hath said, okay, this is His word, this is His promise. And I honestly believe that we can find comfort in that, uh, in, in, in those words, in that praise, in this verse, we can find comfort. Huh? This should erase any kind of uh, negative fear we have in our hearts, in our minds. This should promises of our Lord. Amen? Isa yan sa dapat nating panghawakan. Isa yan sa dapat nating maging uh, uh, sandata sa anumang uh, tangkang pananakot sa ating puso. At sa mga pwede idulo nito pandemic na to at mga kahihinat na nito at mga banda nito. Ang mundo, they may let us down. The government may make promises that it never intends to keep or may intention to keep but wasn't able to keep them. Maring ating mga kaibigan at mga mahal sa buhay may not be able to help us in our situation. But listen, Christ has made a promise that cannot fail. Ang Panginoon ay nangako pakilanman hindi ito mapapako. He is more than able to meet whatever need we may have. Because sabi ito sa Hebrews, doon lang din sa Hebrews chapter 1, di ba doon lang ng konti. Hebrews 1, tinayon, and verse number 3. Hebrews 1 and 3, ang sabi yan, Who being in the brightness of His glory, and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself first our sins, sat down on the right hand of, of the majesty on high. Ang pinag-usapan po natin, He's sustaining and upholding all things with His power. From the, from the, from the very beginning, hindi nagbabagaan ang mga planeta, hindi nawawala sa orbit yung ating, ang ating, uh, ang, ang earth, hindi nawawala sa lugar yung sun, at ang, uh, ang iba pang, uh, iba pang planeta at nagbabagaan, hindi. Why? Because, yan ay sa ilalim ng control ng Panginoon. He is the upholder, of all things. He's the sustainer of all things. By His power. Ito po yun. From the very beginning of time. And all these were, things were created. Ni katitin. Hindi na mawasan ang Pangyarihan Diyos. Nagawa niya. Gano'n ba kung igukumpara yung ating situation sa ginagawa ng Diyos na upholding all of all things from the very beginning up to now. Ganun ba kalaki yung ating problema? Mas malaki ba yan? At higit ba yan sa kakayanan at kapangyarihan natin Diyos? So mga kapatid, our companion's promise, okay, the Lord's promise is that He will not fail us. He will never leave us. And that should bring us peace. Lasting peace. Real peace. So this is our companion speaks. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. And this is the promise that Jesus has made. He is an ever-present help in our times of trouble. We may be facing unlike any we have ever known. We do not face them alone. Let me repeat that. We may be facing troubles unlike any we have ever known, but we, but we do not face them alone. Jesus has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. So what could possibly come our way that the Lord could not handle? Ano yung ating inaakte? Ano yung ating ikinagdidismaya? Ikinakatakot at pinapangamba? Dahil hindi kaya yan i-handle ng Panginoon. We are here no? being assured by the Word of God 
that God is not taken by surprise that at any of our situation or circumstances or persecution or famine or nakedness or terror or so or pandemic or the new normal nay nay in all this okay uh, uh, we have the believers conversation we have the believers uh, contentment we have the believers companion and here in the first part of verse number 6 we have the believers confidence okay we have the believers confidence so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper okay if we can be confident in Christ who would we be? Kanino pa? Kung hindi tayo kay Cristo magtitiwala. So notice that we have uh, confidence because of our hope. We have confidence because of our hope. Hindi naman po ito, no? Speaking of a casual acquaintance or the possibility that our case might be heard. We have the hope and assurance of being able to boldly trust in our Lord. We have the access to the throne of grace. We have the promise of His presence. How could we not be a people of hope with such assurance and stability? So we are not serving one who is here today. Tapos bukas wala na, no? We serve the eternal, omnipresent, omniscient, all-powerful God of glory. In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 to 16. Hebrews 4, please, verses 15 to 16. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Ephesians 3 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him. So we have confidence because of our hope. And secondly, we have confidence because of our help. The Lord is my helper. We may look at that and pass it off as one who is there just to assist us. But there is much more involved in that. Is it a helper? It comes from the root word ng literal na meaning is to run, to makbo. Now, if we say to run to our side in times of needs, to run to our side in times of distress. So we can live with the confidence, the boldness that Jesus will run to our side, to our aid in times of distress. He revealed a parallel promise in John 14, 16, and something else. And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever. And that comforter is rather than the Holy Spirit. The same Greek word, parakletos. Parakletos is one who is summoned to the side of another, especially in aid of defense. One who pleads the cause of another. At sigurado ako, nasasangayong kayo that our helper is more than able to meet our needs. Okay, we can have absolute unwavering confidence in Him. So ito no, we have yung believer's conversation, believer's contentment, believer's companion, believer's confidence, and last but not the least, Hindi pa pwede ang yan. Sabi yan. Verse 6. Ang sabi? So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do 
unto me. Now, itong writer ng Hebrew, he knew something about faith and trust in the Lord. Kung enter, kung enter chapter 11 talks about faith, di ba? Pero it, uh, this was a difficult time for the early believers. They could, uh, but they could trust in the Lord. May hirap yung kanilang sitwasyon dito. At tulad din natin, may hirap yung sitwasyon natin. But we could trust in the Lord. Nagubuhay tayo sa panahon that is increasingly less tolerant of our faith. Maraming mga kristyano, pag nag teaching, ginuhulo, dinadakit, sinasaktan. Maraming mga iglesia, pag nananambahan, ginuhulo. Maraming mga iglesia, pinag-persecute. May iba, dinarakit at ginuhulo. Hindi madali. Masa nang mas nagigigay eh, ngayon kung parang nang una, pero this word is not our home. O kaya dito talagang naging mayroong pong uh, alang tolerance sa ating faith. They want to silence our voice and read the word of our influence. Pwede nga itong ginagawang closing of churches services na to. Kagawa, thanks to God, kapapatuloy pa rin tayo. Patuloy lang tayo manalangin tinanapit ko ang ating mga susundang bang. But there is no need to fear. No need to fear what man, what this world shall do to us. Diba sa ating nga ng Panginoon sa Matthew 10 verse 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Brothers and sisters, I was about to close now, I'm about to close now, brother. We can face this pandemic without fear. I can tell you what this pandemic may afterward bring, but I certainly hope that things will get better economically, but I really don't expect our world to improve very much spiritually. But we can face the new normal without fear. Even in the face of adversity, we can take courage in our Lord. Huwag natin kakalimutan, patuloy natin pakatatandaan that nothing comes our way na hindi nagdaan sa pagpapahintulot ng Diyos. Na nananinig at nakalusot sa kaalaman ng Diyos. Wala po. At anumang pinaintulot ng Panginoon, He will provide the grace and strength that we need to face them, to face the days ahead, to face this pandemic, to face what will come after this, to face the new normal. All we have to do is to lean upon Him and seek His strength to Him no? for our journey. We belong to the Lord and the adversary can touch our soul. So, I do not know where you are at in the journey today. There may be much in your life that has caused you anxiety and fear. Brothers and sisters, we don't have to live defeated and fearful. There is power in the Lord. So if you are struggling why not come to the Lord and allow Him to help you? We cannot do it on our own. You cannot make it on your own. But with the Lord, your helper, our helper, you can, we can. No fear to this pandemic and the new world. Ito po ang salita ng Pahino. Why not one natin ang pagpapalan? Tayo po ay mayo at tayo ay tapos sa pananamit at salamat sa pagkakasin.